Let's talk crochet. Hey folks, it's Mary, AKA Mercy Triumphs, and this is my channel, Slow Crochet. This is episode 044. Today I am talking about my current crocheted works in progress, any new projects that I've started in the last week, and any finishes that I've started as well. So if this is your type of thing, this kind of podcasty, yarny chat, I'd love for you to hang out with me and we'll just spend some time together. Let's get right into it. I have a couple of finishes this week and some of them were actually really last minute. The first I wanna show you is a Pokeball. <laughs> Yesterday, yesterday, we went as a family to trunk or treat and one of my children decided at the very last minute to be a Pokemon trainer. But a Pokemon trainer is nothing if they don't have a Pokeball. So I had a couple of hours to throw this together and yes, I do go that slow. It did take me over an hour to make this little Pokeball. And by Pokeball, if you are not familiar with the trading card game or the anime or the show or anything like that, this is basically what it is. It's two halves of a ball and there's some black around the outside and then there's a little round button, a little white circle there. And then I attached using a little bit of black. There was a pattern that I used for inspiration to kind of get me started but that didn't fully give me the dimensions I wanted because the little Pokemon that my child wanted to carry is only about an inch and a half tall. So I needed something really small and easy to pop into a pocket. So this was created using some Red Heart Super Saver in plain old black and plain old white. And then I have some vintage red that is super stiff. In fact, this child would have been a lot happier if the white were as stiff as the red, but it was totally fine, no worries. We had a lot of fun trunk or treating, and there were a lot of people dressed up as various Pokemon, so it was amusing for my child to kind of go around with his Pokeball thinking, oh, I'll choose you or I'll capture you in the ball. So that was complete work number one and completely out of the blue. I did use a size G hook, which is a 4.25 millimeter hook on this, except around the outside. I did follow the pattern a little bit to do a line of slip stitches in black, but then I had to crochet into those and I was having such a hard time getting my hook in there that I went down a hook size just to do this line of stitches here, but not a big deal. I was kind of fudging the pattern and sewing it on the ends and making sure that it fit properly. So it did get done in time. Happy days. Hopefully this will not get lost among the other kind of riffraff random toys because I did work on this and so I would like it to be appreciated just for a little bit. Speaking of makes for children that we hope they appreciate, I did complete a pair of mittens, little red mittens. These are to be a Christmas present. They're to go in a stocking and the child requested red mittens. They even went as far as to pick out the specific softest red yarn possible. And that was Yarn Bee Soft Secret in the color red, which is red 40. If you're aware of red dye number 40, very accurate color here and kind of ironic considering the color of the child's tongue at present. The mitten pattern I followed was more for inspiration. I did do a very different ribbing and I did, instead of single crochet, I did double crochet herringbone and I did have to fudge around. I was really worried that the child would not like these, but he happened to see me working on them and came and tried them on and was thrilled. In fact, he saw me working, he said, that's not gonna fit my hands, mom. But guess who was wrong? Yes, and who was right? I didn't say I told you so, but I did feel really justified that these fit so well. And they are a little bit, a little bit different for the right and left hand, but that's okay. You can kind of see where the join is, where the rounds joined. But for child's mittens, for a first pair, I think I did all right. I will link the patterns that I use for inspiration in the description below. One of the things that I like to do if I just need something to keep my hands busy is make a hat. And I made a matching hat this week 
to the one I'm wearing. So the same blue chic sheep, y'all, I'm almost out of this yarn, so you won't be seeing it much, but even as I record, I have children outside playing in the cold rain, wearing hats made out of this chic sheep by Marley Bird. And despite sensitive skin and saying, oh, that, that's gonna itch my head, once it's on, it is soft as can be, and wonderfully with the wool, it's gonna keep them nice and warm, even if they get a little bit sprinkled on. So this one is the color poolside, and it is a divine hat, which is a wonderful standard go-to pattern. And I'm gonna add this to my collection of hats in the poolside color and the coral color so that we have other options. The one that I'm wearing on my head right now is a form of a seafarer's cap. I will link that in the description as well. I made one more hat and this one was another one that once I got the crown finished, I could just go on autopilot and work on it without thinking too much about it. For this hat I used, I love this yarn in print and it is the colorway Violet Wisp. This is a Hobby Lobby four weight acrylic yarn and it calls for a size I9 crochet hook. I used a size J and I did a basic Yarnspirations granny stripe beanie. I did make modifications to the original pattern, which I'd actually made one of those in the chic sheep, but I liked how that turned out really well because it created a, a denser kind of granny stripe. So it has four double crochets instead of the three. And every time it called for two in a cluster, I would do three in a cluster. Basically, I started out with five clusters at the crown and then I worked out from there. I have notes in Ravelry in my project files. And so if you look on that, my, my Ravelry name is Mercy Triumphs. So if you find me over there, if you're ever curious, I try to keep that updated as much as possible. Sometimes I do get a little bit behind. Sometimes I might not share the entire completed project because I have film of it more so than still images. But if you ever want more information, I do try to keep that updated if you'd like to replicate a particular project. So I loved how these colors played out. They were so soft and gray and gentle. And I love that kind of kind of marled effect. So I had to get this on the hook immediately. And actually you'll be hearing more about this yarn in a future video, but more on that eventually. I wanna update you guys on my saffron or our Mrs. Reynolds shawl, because that is one that it is ongoing. There comes a point in every shawl where I get to where it just gets so big and it takes so long to do the rows that I'm just like, okay, I'm ready to be done. I love making them. They're one of my favorite things to make. But once you hit that point, it's like, okay, now I kind of just have to be disciplined to get this done. So for this shawl, I'm at the point where I just want to get a few rows done every day because I know it's gonna be really soon that it'll be at the size that I want it. Pardon the sounds of hook and yarn bowl. I am using a size H or an eight or a 5.0 millimeter hook for this. The DK low pill fiber anti-pilling yarn B yarn in the color ox blood, that deep maroon. Anyway, here it is thus far. Here's the center and all the way there. It's really coming along and I love it. I love it. I do know at the end, I'll have to do some stitching along this edge to kind of finish it off, but it's not gonna be that much longer until I'm done. I want it to be a nice big size because it is a little bit of a lacy stitch. I know it's sometimes it's the simple things done well that are most effective and I am loving this for that reason. I have enough of the yarn left that I ought to be able to easily knock out another dozen at least rows. I don't think I'm gonna need that many. I need to go back and count and see about how many I want left. So I am beyond the scope of the shawl itself, but because I'm using a DK weight yarn and I want it to be nice and drapey and big, I am gonna go quite a bit further. So towards the end, you have an eight row, about an eight row repeat. So if I did even eight more rows of this, it would be another five or six inches, I think. So just adding another set of repeats there might get me to the point where I want, I'm having a hard time here, getting it all, in, there we go, move back, darling. I'm happy with where I'm at here. There's a strong possibility that I could get this done this week if I really push 
maybe I'll get it done. That would be marvelous because there's always more shawls I wanna make. And y'all, there's so many things I'm excited about right now. So I just gotta keep going and get these done. Slowly but surely, I started a brand new, very slow going project. I am speaking of Tunisian crochet. Now I've only done Tunisian crochet one time before and I made this hat, another, another in my series. This was my first attempt at Tunisian crochet. Now this bottom part of the brim is not Tunisian, but that is, and it was adequate. The seeming even fixed is still <laughs> kind of awkward, but it is suitable for a bright hat. So why, after this awkward experience, would I pick up Tunisian crochet again? Well, I feel like this yarn was asking for it. So if you follow me on Instagram, and disclaimer here, I am not a big Instagrammer, but I do try to put a few things on there that kind of intersperse in between the videos. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra peek into what's going on in my world, you might find something interesting over there. Anyway, this yarn, which is Scarfy Light in the colorway Tiger Lily, was given to me recently, and it just, for whatever reason, made me think of Tunisian crochet. This yarn is not something I would typically gravitate towards. It is really, it's really fuzzy. It's really hard to frog. Thankfully, I haven't had to frog very much, but my goodness, the halo on that is just super fluffy. And there are little fluffs that come off of it. Never worked with regular scarfy, but I was really drawn to these colors. For whatever reason, I just felt like Tunisian crochet was the right thing to use it for. So I'm about maybe halfway through the skein. I did dig around and I pulled out the center pole and this is what I'm working on. Now this, I think, I think is Tunisian simple stitch. I say I think because I'm not really sure that I'm doing it right. I've watched tutorials. I've looked at Tony Lipsy's book. It is what it is. It looks neat. It looks consistent. And so it's working for me. The little clicking that you're hearing is my stitch marker that is hitting the desk. Apologies there. I'm just doing a long swath. And I'm not really doing this completely in a void. There is a pattern called the precious metals cowl that uses regular scarfie and a larger Tunisian hook. So I'm kind of following along with that vaguely, but once you get going, you just make a long rectangle and then I'm gonna seam it together. That's the basis of the pattern, but I'll still have that linked below. What I love is how the colors are playing out. And I love that with this yarn, it's really making a beautiful texture. I can imagine once this is all fluffed up and curled up, in a cowl, how wonderful that's gonna be. I wouldn't even have bothered with Tunisian crochet at all had I not actually found a couple of these vintage Hero Tunisian crochet hooks. These are made in the USA. This is a size J. It doesn't have the millimeterage on it, but it is in such pristine condition despite the fact that it's vintage, and I've loved just working with it. This is one of those times where I feel like the tool and the yarn together makes the experience. So this is very slow going. It's taking me a good while. I have found myself wanting to work on this, which normally something so repetitive, I'm not that interested in. I need to stay a little bit interested or at least be going on autopilot if I'm paying attention to something else. But this has been so rewarding to work on. And I really do think it's the perfect combination of super smooth, delicious vintage hero hook and that scarfy light yarn. So if you haven't tried scarfy yarn, it might not be for everyone. It typically would not be something I would pull from, but in this moment and this time, it is bringing me so much joy and I'm having so much joy in working on this. I don't know if I can see through that. My plan is to use up this entirety of this skein to do this cowl. And once that's done, I'll seam it together and I'll show it off. So that is it for me this week. Goals for this week, I have one more little Christmas make I wanna do and a bigger Christmas make to get started on. And then I have some other projects that are just crying out to be started. These ideas keep percolating and I'm so, I, man, I just love being in that place where 
you feel joy in what you're making, whatever that process is. And I do certainly hope that you find yourself in the same boat. I hope you're having a lovely day. I've certainly enjoyed spending time with you, and I really appreciate that you've spent a little bit of time with me. You are wonderful. And I'm so glad to know you through this wild and wonderful internet experience called YouTube. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to everyone who's commented and cheered me on and liked and shared and all that kind of YouTube stuff. It's super encouraging. I do hope you realize how important and precious you are. If I'm not your cup of tea, thank you so much for listening this long. I do appreciate it. And I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.